So uh, this is uh, lecture number 13 uh, on this course on analog MOS circuit design. Now in this particular lecture, uh, I will talk about uh, the generation or the design of a current source using a MOS device. As I have already talked about uh, the characteristics of MOS, uh, which is something like that. So let me first draw the schematic diagram of a MOS, then MOS for example, which looks something like that. Now we have three different terminals, gate, drain and source. And we know that uh, the drain current can be written like half mu n c ox w over l into vgs minus vth whole square in the saturation region of the operation. That means if the drain source voltage, if I consider uh, this MOS as a two terminal device for the time being uh, with a certain voltage being applied between the gate and source, suppose this voltage is fixed, let it be some V0 over here so that the device is biased properly. So under this condition, you can visualize this three terminal device as a two terminal device like this. So you have these two terminals available to you. And if the voltage difference between these two, let it be VDS. And if the current being drawn, let it be ID. Then for this particular example, as we have considered over here, we find that the drain current is essentially independent on the value of VDS. Now this has been shown without the channel length modulation. So without channel length modulation, this is true. Without channel length modulation, This is true. Now with channel length modulation, we know that this expression uh, will be modified like this. So this is half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vt square. So that part will be there. And apart from that, we have the correction factor, which is 1 plus lambda vds, which gets multiplied with this previous factor. And now you find that here id is a function of vds with channel length modulation so if i consider the channel length modulation into account uh, then the expression of the current looks something like that and which exhibits the nature of a non-ideal current source ideally you should expect that if i have a current source like this uh, connected between two terminals Suppose this is the current source. Now, if these two terminals are regarded like A and B, then irrespective of the voltage difference between these two terminals, the current which is flowing, let it be I0, so this current should be constant irrespective of the voltage difference between these two terminals. So that is the property of an ideal current source. However, for a non-ideal current source, the value of I0 is no longer constant and it will also depend upon the terminal voltage. So therefore, if I just uh, incorporate the channel in modulation, we find that the value of ID is no longer constant, rather it depends upon the value of VDS. And based on that, we can also find out the output resistance. So the output resistance under this condition, as you know, is nothing but 1 upon delta ID by delta VDS and which we have calculated to be 1 upon lambda id in some of the previous lectures. So we find that the output resistance can be written like 1 upon lambda id. So lambda is equal to 0. That means there is no channel length modulation and which signifies that R0 is equal to infinite. So lambda is equal to 0. That means R0 equal to infinite. And no channel length modulation. 
So that is the condition. However, if lambda is non-zero, under this case, R naught will be finite and large. And that is the scenario with channel length modulation. So let me write in short CLM. So with CLM, uh, R naught will be finite and it will be large, but it cannot be infinite. And as a matter of fact, the current source that we generate over here is not an ideal one. And for an ideal current source, as we know, for ideal current source, if I have an ideal current source, then the corresponding value of its output resistance, so this output resistance is infinite. So for an ideal current source, the output resistance will be infinite. So even if I consider that, okay, we have a resistance like this, which is connected in parallel with the ideal current source, then obviously, uh, if the value of R0 is equal to infinite, then between these two points, there will be no flow of current. This will basically act as an open circuit. However, for a non-ideal current source, if I consider the current source to be non-ideal one, then for non-ideal current source, the value of R0 is not at all infinite, rather it is a finite quantity. So this output resistance is finite. So we can make an ideal current source by visualizing this output resistance to be at a very high value. Ideally, it should be infinite. So if it is infinite, then we can design the ideal current source, but practically it is very difficult to achieve. So the bottom line from this discussion is that larger the value of the output resistance, closer the current source will be to its ideal nature. So therefore, if I just consider a MOS like this, if I just consider an N MOS like this, with three terminals where a gate is having a corresponding bias so that the device is on and let this be called like say V0 and these two terminals are left this and this drain and source. So here we are operating the device in the saturation region and these are the two terminals of operation D and S and you have to ensure obviously uh, V0 should be greater than the threshold voltage so that the device is in on condition. So for this particular MOS the corresponding output resistance that you have already calculated is nothing but so the output resistance as offered uh, by this particular structure is given by R0. We have just now calculated this one. Now sometimes the value of R0 cannot be that large so that uh, it can be approximated to be an ideal current source. So once again if I just consider uh, the corresponding uh, ID VDS characteristics which looks something like that. As you know uh, this is something like that. So this is the ideal one that means uh, id is constant even if uh, vds varies and practically you have a slope like this and this value corresponds to lambda is equal to zero and this value corresponds to lambda is not equal to zero So even if the lambda value is not equal to zero, our objective will be to increase the output resistance of the entire structure. Now in order to accomplish this task, uh, some trick has been applied over here. We need to uh, change the circuit to certain extent so that it can provide a higher output resistance as compared to R0 and it is something like that. So once again we do have a 
these three get drain and source and what we have is uh, between source and this connection we have a resistance like this which we call rs and obviously the gate source terminal is biased so that the device is in on condition now uh, we have uh, a modified structure which looks something like that now once again uh, you have these two nodes available to you with a resistance connected from the source terminal so these are the two nodes so if i call this to be my terminal a this to be my terminal b this is s this is the source terminal so now if the current being drawn by the circuit if i call this current to be say ia and then uh, we need to find out the variation of this ia with respect to the corresponding variation of vab and uh, accordingly we need to calculate the output resistance as exhibited by this particular structure so in order to accomplish this task what you need to do is uh, we have to draw the corresponding small signal model of the circuit so uh, let me just uh, draw the corresponding small signal model so we have three terminals gate drain and source so let me mark those three terminals let this be my gate terminal this is the drain this one is the source terminal and uh, between these two let the voltage difference equal to v1 and accordingly we have a voltage dependent current source in between drain and source which is nothing but gm times v1 and obviously here we need to include the value of r0 because if r0 is equal to infinite then this entire discussion is meaningless useless because if r0 is equal to infinite then this previous structure will act like an ideal current source because of the presence of r0 this mos will exhibit some non ideal nature so we have r0 between the drain and the source terminal just like this now this completes the small signal model of the mos itself now what is left uh, now you have this resistance rs which is connected from the source terminal to the reference terminal so if i consider b this particular node b to be my reference terminal or reference node uh, then we can have the resistance rs connected between the source and the reference node and what we have this terminal available to us and uh, the gate is uh, at ac ground so now you have uh, these two terminals available to you this terminal this drain terminal and this terminal so i may call this is my terminal a and this is my terminal b so accordingly in order to find out uh, the resistance as exhibited by this particular structure so in order to identify the resistance as exhibited by this particular structure uh, what you need to do is that you need to connect some test voltage from the outside and accordingly you have to measure the corresponding current so we need to connect some test voltage between this terminal and the ground ground being the reference terminal so some vx is connected and suppose the current being driven is given by ix so accordingly uh, you need to find out the relation between vx and ix so now what you can find over here is that this rx will enter here and it is once again having uh, two different component one is through this r0 this resistance and the second component is through gmv1 and once again 
these two currents will meet at this particular point at the source end and it will flow through this. So this current is also equal to Ix. So therefore the voltage difference between this point and this point is nothing but Ix times Rs. So if I call this point is having a potential of say V dashed with respect to ground uh, then this V dashed is given by Ix times Rs. And if I apply KVL around this loop uh, then it is quite apparent that V1 plus V dashed is equal to 0 or V1 is equal to minus V dashed. Okay. So uh, that is over. Uh, then uh, we have to apply uh, the KVL at the output side. What we have at this particular point, the voltage equal to Vx, and over here, uh, this Vx is having two different components. One is through R0, this current Ix. One part will be through this, and the other part will be through this. So what about this particular current? So if I call this current to be say I0, then this I0 is nothing but Ix minus Gm times V1. And that is equal to Ix plus Gm V dashed, which is equal to Ix plus, if I simply substitute the value of V dashed, this will be Ix times Rs. So Gm Rs times Ix. So I0 can be written like Ix into 1 plus Gm Rs. So this is the current which will flow through this R0 and accordingly a voltage difference will be created. So this voltage Vx over here, this voltage is having two different components. One is this part plus this part. So now uh, we can write like this. So ultimately this Vx is having two component. One is this I0 time R0 plus Ix time Rs. Now let me uh, substitute the value for I0 which is nothing but Ix into 1 plus Gm Rs. So this is nothing but Ix into 1 plus Gm times Rs multiplied with R0 plus Ix Rs. And from that we can simplify it to be Vx to be Ix into 1 plus Gm Rs into R0 plus Rs. So the resistance as offered by this particular degenerated structure is given by Vx upon Ix that is equal to 1 plus Gm Rs times R0 plus Rs. Or you can also represent the same thing like 1 plus Gm R0 time Rs plus R0. So uh, in a nutshell what I can show you if I have a structure like this if I have a structure like this we have a two terminal device in fact uh, we have started with a three terminal device and ultimately we have made it a, a two terminal device for which so this is equivalent to having a current source and the resistance R0. So this value is equal to R0. On the other hand, if I consider the degenerated structure which looks something like that,
once again uh, we have two terminals available to us this time we have the output resistance to be given by r out so this one is r out and it is quite apparent that r out is much much greater as compared to r not because here uh, r not gets multiplied with 1 plus gmrs and then it is added with rs or in other words uh, in this particular expression what we find is r not is added with 1 plus gmr not time rs so it is quite apparent that r out is much much greater as compared to r not so if i just compare between these two if i want to compare between these two structure then the second structure what we have derived right now this structure is much more ideal as compared to the previous structure now that conclusion we can make just by observing the value of r not or the output resistance as exhibited by this current source here the output resistance is given by only r not that is equal to 1 1 by lambda id on the other hand in the source degenerated structure what we find is the output resistance is given by 1 plus gmr not time rs plus r not which is much much greater as compared to r not therefore uh, this structure is much more ideal or closer to ideal as compared to the previous structure now uh, what you can do is uh, you can also replace uh, these uh, register by means of so you can also replace this register by means of another current source in fact we have a structure like this suppose this is my bias voltage over here this term is available to us and we have another resistance over here in the form of rs now that resistance can also be replaced by means of another mos device because you know that mos can also be used as a resistor so which is something like that we can also have a situation like this suppose this voltage is equal to v1 this is mos2 let this be mos1 so these are the two terminals available to us a and b in fact uh, we have uh, got the same structure the only difference what we have made over here is that instead of having a simple resistor connected between the source and this point b we have replaced the resistor by means of another mos device and this mos is not degenerated the simple mos device operating in the saturation region so for the second mos what we have over here for the second mos so let me mark like m2 so for the second mos as we have discussed already let it be v1 as we have discussed already so this one is nothing but this is equivalent to having a resistance of 1 upon sorry so the resistance is equal to r not 2 So if i just uh, consider the resistance value the this resistance the resistance value is given by r not 2 that is equal to 1 upon lambda times idq so therefore between a to b 
the effective resistance as perceived by us is given by once again i can uh, consider the previous uh, expression it was something like that 1 upon 1 plus gm r not time rs plus r not so this rab is nothing but 1 plus gm now this gm corresponds to the upper one it will be gm1 times rs so this rs is nothing but ro2 here so gm1 times ro2 multiplied with ro and that ro corresponds to the first ro that is ro1 plus ro2 and that can also be written like 1 plus gm1 times ro1 multiplied with ro2 plus ro1 in any case the value of rab is much much greater than ro1 as well as ro2 so if i have a simple MOS device like this in isolation that can provide a resistance equal to RO1 or RO2. But if I have a two MOS device like this, in which case the lower MOS M2 acts like a degeneration register for the upper one, then the effective value of the resistance can be modeled like 1 plus GM1 times RO1 whole multiplied with RO2 plus RO1 or the other equation. So this particular architecture will design the current source which is much more closer to the ideal one. Now with this uh, I would like to uh, conclude this lecture session on the design of current source using the MOS device.